this is for question two on page 157. Um, specifically, I'm going to look at B and then maybe one after that. But um, these are both parabolas. You know that because you've got a single uh, Y variable in this case equal to an X squared on the other side. So this is these are quadratic and they make parabolas. Let's get rid of that. And of course, you know this one, we know that our vertex is at zero, zero. And this one, you know the vertex is at two, zero. So that's the key difference here, is that this um, y equals x squared is shifted over two units for the second one. If we sketched the y equals x squared, we know it's basically this y equals x minus 2 squared at 2, 0 is going to be the same shape. So if this first parabola was a wire, I could pick it up and move it, and they're exactly the same size and shape. All this changed is the spot that they are on the graph. So how do you answer all the rest of those questions then? We've got to do axis of symmetry, domain range, and intercepts. Axis of symmetry. Most importantly, is always an equation. It's always something equal something. And for all of the parabolas that we do in pre-calc 20, we're talking about a vertical line. Specifically, let me make it so you can see it. Your axis of symmetry is that line that splits the two symmetrical halves of your parabola. So a vertical line is always x equals something. And if my vertex here is at 0, 0, ordered pairs have round brackets, then I know my axis of symmetry is x equals 0 because that's the x value of my vertex. Over here, my vertex is 2, 0. So my equation for my axis of symmetry is x equals 2 because it's a vertical line where every point on that line has an x value of 2. Those are my axis of symmetry. Domain. Easiest thing in all of this unit for every parabola you do in pre-calc 20, the domain, or the domain is x, is an element of something called the real numbers. All that means is since the parabola gets wider and wider and wider forever, if we could list every ordered pair on there, every number that exists will be used as an x value. It covers everything. Range, on the other hand, is always going to have some limit. A part of it is they are real numbers. So you can always put that down, even if you aren't sure what else to do. But there's always a second part here because there's a limit. You know you have a maximum or a minimum since these are both opening up, or we say concave up. We know they have a minimum. They have a lowest value. That means when we go to do our range, the y values are bigger than or equal to something because they have a minimum and everything else is bigger. The y value comes from the y value in our vertex which for both of these is zero. So there's your range. So there's your domain range, and that brings us to what you actually asked about, which was intercepts. Intercepts are where the curve hits the axes. So we have x-intercepts and we have y-intercepts. <laughs> for both of these, you can see that our vertex is our x-intercept. But if you couldn't see those, to find x-intercepts, we set y equal to 0. So in the equation, y equals x squared. When I put 0 in for y, square root of both sides, and I'm going to get x is 0. Oops. So my x-intercept is at 0. And interestingly enough, and I'm just going to move right here beside it and say to find the y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. So in y equals x squared, if I put a 0 in for the x, I also find out that that one point on this first graph is actually the intercept on both the x-axis and the y-axis, which we know already. You can see that, right? Now, on the second graph, we can see that our x-intercept should be at 2, 0. Well, let's check that out. 
So x minus 2 squared, right? Yes. If I set y equal to 0, now what do I do? How do I solve that? To get rid of a squared, I find square root. Square root of 0 is still 0. I add 2 to both sides. And I find out that my x-intercept is at the point where x is 2 and y is 0, right? We set y equal to 0 in order to get our x value. So we could also write these as ordered pairs with round brackets. To find the uh, y-intercept, we set x equal to 0. That's always easier. For our parabolas, putting 0 in here, 0 take away 2 is still negative 2. When I square it, I get 4. That tells me that when x is 0, y is 4, is the y-intercept on my curve. So this is the point 0, 4. Now, a cool thing about parabolas, because they're symmetrical, is I should be able to go straight across here and go, OK, so if this point was 4 units up, this point will also be 4 units up. If if this and I need another color. If this point is two units to the left of the vertex, this point will be two units to the right of the vertex. So there's a point two four that just helps you tie down the shape. That point doesn't have any fancy name to it or anything. That's just using the symmetry of the curve to make it more accurate in your sketch.